Thanks for joining us. We're going to run through a calibration of a luminescent sensor dissolved oxygen meters following the Oregon DEQ's laboratory's water quality monitoring section standard operating procedures. So uh, the equipment that we have in order to do uh, this test obviously you need to have a meter. Uh, you need some sort of log book or field sheet, some sort of uh, notebook for keeping track of the calibrations that you do. The manuals uh, will provide important information that you want to keep in hand and you'll need uh, some sort of chamber that we're going to fill with our standard. And the standard for that we recommend for doing our calibrations of dissolved oxygen is water saturated air and uh, that's generally the method that's recommended by most manufacturers including uh, the YSI meter, the Pro ODO meter that we have here and these uh, Orion meters as well. So the, the thing to remember about your <coughs> calibration is that you are creating a standard, you are saturating relatively dry air with water and the quality of that standard that you create is going to determine the quality of your subsequent measures. So ha the, the keys to creating a good standard in your calibration chamber, whether it be something like this or a BOD bottle, are proper preparation of the probe and the chamber having a stable environment like we have here in the in our laboratory or maybe in the office or in a basement something like that giving sufficient time for the air in your chamber to become completely saturated and of course proper documentation uh, and process so that you uh, can do it repeatedly and that you can uh, show what you've done so let's go ahead with that uh, process the first thing we'll do is just take a quick look at a typical DO probe. Here this, <clears throat> this is the Orion, uh, Thermo Orion probe. What you're going to see on these probes is first uh, a thermistor of some type generally uh, located in this general vicinity on most probes. And then the business end here is at the tip. Uh, and here you have some sort of protective coating over the top of the lumophore and the lumophore is what's reacting with dissolved oxygen or with the oxygen and uh, giving you the signal that that gets converted into a concentration. The probe itself before we leave here usually has some sort of little shoulder here or neck and that um, will generally allow the probe to slide into a 300 milliliter BOD bottle like so and uh, you can use this either for making measurements if you fill it up high enough or you can actually use this as a calibration chamber if you need to as well. The probe will usually have some type of guard to protect it uh, during field use uh, and then the cali a calibration chamber of some type. Here's the YSI calibration chamber, this uh, gray end on that probe. Um, the thermo one looks like this and the calibration chamber will usually maybe have some type of sponge uh, in the end of it that you'll either be able to pound out uh, or it'll have access from the end like this. <clears throat> You're also going to need, uh, the meter will need to have some type of a barometer or some way of determining atmospheric pressure because your standard, the concentration of your standard is uh, going to be determined based on the barometric pressure and the temperature conditions uh, for your water saturated air. So let's, pr let's properly prepare our probe here. Uh, you've got your thermistor that you want to make sure that is dry and you also want to make sure that there are no water droplets on the business end of your, of your uh, sensor here on the sensor cap and you want to be gentle with how you dry this off. You don't want to just scratch away at it. I'm just using the tissue there to, to get the water off. Now I've got that dry and <clears throat> I want to make sure that I have moisture on this sponge and that moisture is what's going to give me the water in the saturated air. 
and I can feel that my finger is moist when I pull it out of there. Uh, if you needed to, you could put a couple of drops of water in, but you don't want it to be soaking saturated like that in the sponge so that when you press on it, you get drops of water falling out. Um, that's not going to maximize the water to air surface area. That's better to have it just kind of moist. That's going to give you the most rapid equilibration. So we've got that moist sponge in our chamber and we screw it on. The other element of the <coughs> calibration chamber, whether you're using something like a BOD bottle or something like this, is that it needs to be vented. Here you can see a vent. Um, the YSI has a vent on the side there as well. All these chambers need to be vented so that they're at equilibrium with barometric pressure. So now we're going to uh, wait for that to reach equilibrium. Um, we're not going to turn on elevator music and wait. We're, we're going to move on to these others. Uh, but you should keep in mind the manual will tell you approximately how long it's going to take to uh, equilibrate in your chambers here. But the, uh, the thing to keep in mind is that that generally is based on the meter and the air being at the same temperature or close to it within a degree or two. Uh, if you are n do not have those conditions, for example, if you take uh, a cold meter in from a rig and bring it into the lab or, or uh, vice versa in the summertime, um, it's going to take more than 10 minutes, as they recommend in these manuals. It's going to take 15 minutes. It's going to take a half an hour uh, or maybe more uh, to get a stable, uh, stable reading. Uh, likewise, if the environment itself is changing rapidly, it's going to be difficult to, uh, to get a stable environment that is a stable saturated um, concentration. The concentration is dependent on barometric pressure and it's dependent on temperature. And if the temperature is moving up, then you're going to uh, be having a hard time reaching equilibrium. Or if the temperature is moving down, like uh, same thing. So. Uh, keep that in mind. Be um, critical of your standard that you're creating. You're not pouring something out of a bottle that uh, some approved lot by NIST or something like that with these calibration standards. You're creating it yourself, so you need to think critically. And if you feel like the environment that you're working in is not giving you a stable environment like we have here in the lab, then maybe it's better to not recalibrate, but to um, just to try to do verifications and, and make sure that uh, your initial calibration uh, is still holding. With In these LDO probes, they quite often do. So now that I've got this in here, I need to leave it in there. That's another key component. Uh, once I open it up, I'm going to have to wait another 10 minutes or however long it's going to take to uh, equilibrate. Uh, so, But what I want to do in terms of documentation is once I've got that um, put in, I'm going to right down in my book here I've got the date my initials and where I am I've written down the time that I set it up and if I set this up at 8 o'clock I really could have taken my first reading at 805 and gotten all of the data here I've got an air standard I've got a temperature pressure percent saturation milligrams per liter and then about five minutes later I could repeat that and if I'm within one tenth for both temperature and for milligrams per liter, then I'm good. I'm ready to move on. I've got a stable, saturated air standard. If I'm off by more than a tenth on either temperature or pressure, then I'm going to go ahead and wait another four to five minutes. So what we're looking for to say we've got stable standard is within a tenth for temperature or within a tenth for milligrams per liter on both uh, temperature and milligrams per liter over the course of four to five minutes. If you're if you're hitting that, then you can call it stable and move on to calibration. So let's move on to just to show you the general process here. We'll calibrate the YSI in the DO channel. This might help. Uh, you hit calibrate, which is on the soft key here. We're doing an air calibration. We're doing a percent saturation. And then it's going to take the the meter a little bit to, to lock in on that and be ready to calibrate. If you're using the YSI, you want to make sure when you're doing your calibration that you are 
working in percent local, that's referring to the barometric pressure. Uh, sometimes, uh, particularly YSI meters, uh, in our experience, will give you a corrected barometric pressure for sea level, and, and you want you want the low, what they call the local barometric pressure. Once you're done with the calibration, you record the t time that you calibrated, and then don't take it out of the sleeve yet because you still need to write down your post-calibration values. So our meter at this time uh, has finished with the calibration. We hit Cal done. It gives us all of the good laboratory practices, data that it's going to store and that we want to keep for future reference if we need to. Uh, and now we've moved on and we're ready to, uh, to record our post-calibration information. And that's what we would put here. So that's the process for calibrating a meter. The next step, according to the uh, DEQ standard operating procedures, is to go ahead and move on to calibration verification, which will cover at another time.